Gandhian principles and <coughs> the Western liberal principles. the socialist principles, Gandhian principles and the western liberal principles, these are the three categories of principles <coughs> which can be found in the directive principles of state policy. So, whatever the principles are, they have been categorized into these three categories. <coughs> when we say socialist principles, there are some principles in part 4 of the constitution, which talk about the emancipation of the workers, which talks about creating equality in the society. <coughs> we have termed them as socialist principles, because socialism talks about emancipation of the workers, it talks about equality among the people. So, those principles which are close to the socialist viewpoint and which have been added in part 4, we term them as socialist principles. Now, what are the socialist principles which are there in the directive principles? You may note it. First, the resources to be distributed, the resources to be distributed in such a manner in such a manner that it should be for the common good that it should be for the common good. Secondly, prevention of concentration of wealth, prevention of concentration of wealth in fewer hands, in fewer hands, then equal pay for equal work, equal pay for equal work for both men and women. for both men and women. <coughs> then, provision of, provision of employment, provision for, sorry, for employment and other assistance provision for employment and other assistance in some special cases, in some special cases. <coughs> you say many of the programs related to employment generation, they are because of this directive principle. For example, we had earlier the Jawahar Rojgar Yojana the training for rural youth for self-employment, then we had got the Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Gu Employment Guarantee Act. All this is according to this principle, that is what you have written here. So, the broad gu guideline has been provided here in this co in part 4 and according to that the policies have been made. Next, free legal aid, free legal aid.
then human conditions of work human conditions of work h u m a n e human conditions of work including maternity relief including maternity relief <coughs> the maternity leave or the child care leave that is given to the women those rules have been made according to this directive principle then participation of workers participation of workers in the management of industries in the management of industries then early childhood care <coughs> early childhood care for children for children up to 6 years of age up to 6 years of age these are some of the socialist principles which are there in part 4 of the constitution now coming to the gandhian principles <coughs> coming to the gandhian principles the things which were very close to gandhian heart <coughs> or gandhi's heart first organization of the village panchayats organization of the village panchayats gandhi ji was of the view that every village ought to be a republic if an authority is imposed from above if a decision is imposed from above that will lead to a violent society and that is why gandhi wanted that is planning should be from below the <coughs> empowerment of the rural people or the people at the village level should be there secondly promotion of promotion of the interests of the socially and educationally backward classes the socially and educationally backward classes including the scheduled caste and scheduled tribes no doubt promotion of the interest of the backward classes uh, was there in the minds of dr b r ambedkar also but gandhi also felt about the <coughs> uh, needs of these people gandhi coined the term for the schedule caste we call them as schedule caste today only but yes gandhi ji used the term harijan uh, dr ambedkar used the term untouchables and nowadays we use the term schedule castes schedule caste is not a caste my caste appears in the schedule clear yeah, my caste appears in the schedule that is schedule caste it is not okay you are schedule caste it is not like that and gandhi wanted the eradication of untouchability uh, by the change of heart he used to set examples and he had used the term harijan as i had told you for the untouchables then thirdly or next promotion of cottage industries 
promotion of cottage industries and small scale industries promotion of cottage and small scale industries gandhi in his work hind swaraj he has talked in length about the machinery craze gandhi was not against machines but he was against the machinery craze gandhi was of the opinion that the textile mills of manchester they are destroying our cottage industries our small scale industries gandhi was never in favor of mass production he always favored production by the masses production by the mass <coughs> by the masses not mass production and that is why he emphasized on charkha he emphasized on the cottage industries because that will give work to every hand that was his main aim and that is why we consider it as a gandhian principle <coughs> next prohibition of cow slaughter prohibition of cow slaughter and other milch animals and other milch animals milch means milk giving animal next prohibition of prohibition of in toxic <coughs> prohibition of the consumption consumption of intoxicating drinks of intoxicating drinks including liquor including liquor <coughs> these are some of the gandhian principles which have been uh, placed in part 4 of the constitution now coming to the western liberal principles according to this point i provision of convention of intoxicated drinks in the sir if the government is doing license to the liquor manufacturer it is a violation of this principle i'm coming to it i have not finished the discussion <coughs> now coming to the western liberal principles means these principles are there in the western countries they are liberal principles you see we had got socialist principles and we have got the liberal principles also first of all equal justice for all equal justice for all then uniform civil code uniform civil code then separation of separation of judiciary separation of judiciary from the executive and then promotion of international peace and security promotion of international peace and security <coughs> now i just wanted to give you an idea that okay these are the directive principles of state policy if we would have 
discussed it article wise then the things would have been boring for us also in the prelims examination there can be a question which of the following is a directive principle there can be two fundamental rights one fundamental duty and we can have a directive principle so you should have an idea that okay what are the directive principles now coming to the nature of the directive principles so in the light of the recent uh, ongoing issues regarding the beef and the slaughter of cows in some of the states they emphasize so much in this uh, principle that i feel like they dilute the very objective of the principles and also i feel like this uh, principle comes in conflict you can go to the supreme court no no these things are not to be discussed in the class these things are very touchy issues if we have got any, if we have got any problem i have no opinion regarding this that what the state governments are doing clear because <coughs> when i speak in a public platform it may matter a lot the teacher has got this view so the public minded persons they can go to the judiciary regarding the intention of the concerned government and it's also in conflict with article any 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 of the things any of the things if the people are not satisfied with it if the people feel that okay it is something that is being imposed on them they can always go to the judiciary not an issue actually sir i am not asking for a solution but uh, how can we like nothing i have told you you cannot do that dekho first of all one thing that we need to remember is that when we are not happy with any organs of the government the two ways are one you can be an activist and your voice will not never be heard secondly you can go to the judiciary if you have got faith in the system and thirdly those who don't have the faith in the system they should leave the country see this sibat because i have seen that nowadays people are hey, this is the country what is going on in this country are hey? and especially those who have no work they talk about such type of things those who have no work they talk about such type of things and <clears throat> when i talk about the directive principles and as you have may have attended my earlier classes also and <clears throat> i had told you that is what i am going to discuss with my friends now that the directive principles are not to be in, are not enforceable in the court of law it depends on the state clear it depends on the state for example prohibition prohibition or <clears throat> basically it is a type of issue that has been made by the people or we can say the people who have got no work of their own <coughs> coming to <coughs> the nature of the directive principles nature of directive principles the directive principles are not are not enforceable or <coughs> they are non justiciable not enforceable or non justiciable now coming to the question that you were putting prohibition basically even if the directive principles are not implemented we cannot go to the court of law the simple reason is that it all depends on the implementation of the directive principles depends on the support that it gets from the society and the resources that we have this matter was discussed in the constituent assembly also in the constituent assembly two chapters were placed for discussion one the fundamental rights one 
that is the fundamental rights that we discussed and the second one was this directive principles of state policy and it was not named as directive principles of state policy it was termed as fundamental rights to fundamental rights to and when the discussion was going on on fundamental rights to then the clauses which were there was that it will not be enforceable in the court of law the justification was given by the drafting committee that why they will not be made enforceable or justiciable in the court of law when we talk about the fundamental rights it costs nothing on the part of the state exchequer to im implement the fundamental rights for example if i wish to move in this country or reside and sit down in any part of the country i'll have to spend money and i'll enjoy those rights right to have a trade occupation or profession or we can say right to practice one's religion it will not cost a single paisa for the government of india to implement my fundamental rights on the other hand when we talk about the directive principles of state policy it will need resources and the support of the members of the society for example if you want to organize the village panchayats you need the resources of the society you need to conduct elections you need to have the panchayat buildings then you need to pay the representatives also it will cost then human conditions of work including maternity relief maternity leave will be given to women she will be getting salary and without any work a burden on the state exchequer then <coughs> uniform civil code you need the support of the members of the society for that there has to be developed a consensus on uniform civil code then the current problem that your friend was saying animal husbandry and ban on cow slaughter and other milch animals why such type of questions are being raised as your friend was raising it is because we need the support of the society to implement that to implement that wherever the government is in majority obviously we see that it feels that it has got the support of the people and that is why it implements such type of policies when you go to kerala now i don't know why people have made a hue and cry regarding it in kerala it is an open thing when i was there in kerala uh so i had also gone to a restaurant where the beef was being served and my host asked me that whether you want to have it not i simply said one sentence that my taste has not been developed yes my taste has not been developed so if the taste has not been developed why i will have that so it is not about hatred that okay are he is eating that or he is eating that i eat non vegetarian food i don't feel bad about it some people are pure vegetarians clear so it all it is a choice but it all depends on the government in kerala obviously it was allowed also earlier so i don't know why people are making hue and cry about it it is just because of bihar elections <laughs> every issue has been become, has become uh, we can say uh, issue related with religion that beef is associated with a particular community so obviously if we we'll if we will talk about it no no it is it should not be banned then obviously we will be getting a vote of the particular community but these things are very general things and that is why i 
we can say sometimes feel disturbed when people talk about such type of things it is a food habit everyone and if you have the taste developed you can have pork obviously why not ban of pork if it is on the religious grounds yes in many of the religions obviously it is prohibited it is prohibited but why not why not a hue and cry regarding it many other aspects are there issues are made in india issues are not there fear issues are not there they are made jisko khana wo theek apne ghar mein khai raha jisko kya khana hai clear <laughs> everyone so unnecessarily we should not put our brains here and there yes we should be very much broad minded in such type of things that is why you said you see in jammu and kashmir in jammu and kashmir there was an order of the court and then we had got the court ruling regarding it so we have got the judiciary also if the people feel disturbed about certain things they can always go to the court of law so <coughs> i was talking about this that is they are have been made non justiciable or not enforceable because they need the support of the society as well as the resources of the society so it was discussed in the constituent assembly that as and when the resources of the country will permit then we can implement these fundamental rights then some member said then why we should have the name fundamental rights they are in the form of directive so yes so we will be changing the nomenclature to directive principles of state policy so the part which was included as part for discussion as fundamental rights 1 fundamental rights 2 fundamental rights 2 was converted to directive principles of state policy that was the nomenclature that was given to it <coughs> so it was because of the resource then aur tum prohibition ki baat jo kar rahe the basically dekho jab when we talk about liquor liquor is a source of excise for most of the states so it is a tax so if the people wish to drink let them drink chori se piyenge usse acha hai ki theek hai aise peene to tumko tax bhi mil raha hai sarkar ka not an issue so it has to be taken in that way in some of the states we have got prohibition but do you can you imagine that people who are used to drinking they will not be drinking in those states there is a state called gujarat in india and in gujarat in gujarat obviously there is a prohibition abhi bhi chal raha hai ki nahi prohibition there is prohibition but four or five years earlier 400 people died of we can say this uh, country made liquor ab iska ha hook bolte hai na there is country made liquor you see a dry state and their people are dying because so jisko jo karna wo to kar hi leta hai big so the thing is that it is the government saying that government should do what it should not do but the aspect is that uh, the government takes into consideration various aspects before implementing the directive principles of state policy <coughs> then these are positive obligations these are positive obligations on the part of the state as most of the directive principles as most of the directive principles are positive positively worded are positively worded now you see the wordings of the fundamental rights they were negatively worded the state shall not discriminate the state shall not deny the state shall not deprive here the positive things are there what the state shall do the state shall strive for so the wordings are more positive what the state shall do and 
the directive principles they lead us towards social economic 